Real quick, I wanted to shoot a video and show, these are the intake, lower intake plenum studs that are in the head, that are in my old head. And I uh, had them send back my head. So I guess they left those in there. What I'm doing is I'm taking the two nuts and I'm tightening them against each other so that there's a lot of uh, tension on them. So now with that, I can just take it off like that. Once I got it working out, I felt pretty good about it. So what I'm gonna do is come over here, do the same thing. And just work, work that back in there. So, and I can just take this, tighten it up. Probably not necessary putting it back in because you can just work it back uh, or when you tighten the nut on it's just going to tighten it back in there anyways but anyway that's how you can uh, get it to back out i hope that's where you can see it it's kind of a hard spot to get to yeah i'm gonna come in from the top We're gonna focus on replacing the thermostat next. So, it's the new thermostat, and it's gotta slide this gasket on here. slides in there. What we're going to do is take take this these two nuts and this bolt off and this gasket here. You can't, can't really tell. Which way it goes on, except that there is only one way. It's gonna be like that. It's gonna go on like that. And so the part that's raised is going to go on the engine block or timing chain cover, whatever you want to call it, call it water outlet. That matches what we did on the back. Okay, now I've got the thermostat on here, and I find out if I do this bottom bolt and get it cinched on, it really lines up a lot of things really well. 
don't believe there's a gasket here because this o-ring i think that's gonna seal right here okay, next we're gonna adjust the thermostat i found this in the installation instructions about the angle of this i guess they call it the jiggle valve and i'll pull it out real quick and show you it's got to be 15 degrees um right of i'd call that zero degrees or 12 o'clock that's it that's what it looks like to me 15 degrees right of 12 o'clock let's just pull this out here yeah that's the little valve we're talking about and that's good information to know i think i had an issue with my 2uz 2uz fe on GX470, and that might have been the problem. And then this little tab right here, and then there's a little bump right there on the back side that goes up. This side doesn't have that bump. So it goes like this. Slide this on. Now I've already got a torque wrench set up for 15 foot pounds. That's what I was going back through the manual for. Just to make sure I had it set up. I had the right torque numbers. Just a little bit. Just go back and forth a little bit here. Key with the torque wrench is just to take it slow. Especially with this one, I can't really feel the click, so I just take it real slow. There. Felt it. Felt it. All right, got that on. All right, next there's a 14 millimeter bolt that holds this water bypass bracket on. Like I said, when I got this cinched down on the bottom over here it really lined up nicely there we go not too worried about the torque on this thing it's 14 so it could hold a good bit but i'm just gonna put a snug the next one over here The 12 millimeter is going to go right there above the starter. Okay, we're going to work on installing the cylinder head rear cover housing, which houses the uh, temperature sensor coming out the back of the block. There's three um, or two bolts, one nut, all 12 millimeters. In between there, there's this is an important part. There's this gasket, and this dog ear is going to go to the passenger side of the truck. And then you can see here that there's some raised indentions that are gonna go against the block. And then of course on the other side, it's the inverse of that. And those are gonna go against the housing. So that, let me hold it. That gasket's on there like that. Anyway, so we're going to torque these bolts to 10 foot-pounds and then move on to the next thing. So there's two bolts, 12 millimeters and one nut, also 12 millimeters, and we're going to torque those to 10 foot-pounds. Okay, today we're going to start on connecting a lot of the heater hoses. I bought an HPS hose kit mainly because I had a hard time sourcing these. It seemed like they were out of stock, all the factory ones, but we got one, two, and then three hoses here that I'm gonna replace. 
this large one is the one that I damaged, cut it off, so I had to replace it anyways. Uh, the two larger hoses, which we're not gonna work on today, most likely um, I'm getting some factory Toyota ones for them, but I won't be replacing those. And they were out of stock from HPS, so I couldn't get them through HPS. Um, yeah. So that's gonna be our goal is getting the uh, hoses connected and getting this, uh, this large hose runs to this aluminum pipe, which comes over to the thermostat. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll, we'll get that replaced too. One of the first steps, I'm just gonna move some of the clamps over. I'm gonna reuse the constant tension clamp if possible. Heard good things about those versus the worm gear clamp that HPS provided. But we will see. Put a little bit of just automatic transmission fluid just on here to make it slip on a little better. I thought I brought some dielectric grease, but I guess I forgot. I'm trying to get this hose clamp to slide over now. Go ahead and cut. I'm just going to keep doing that. It's probably going to take another two or three minutes. Right, we're going to work on mounting this, this heater hose up. Just a 10 millimeter bolt here.
down snug. What I think I'm gonna do next, I think I'm gonna take some of these other hoses off um, just in case I have issues getting getting them off. And I don't want this red, this one I just put on to be in the way. All right, we're just getting in the fuel filter in. I don't know if you guys caught it, but on the install, I called it a fuel pump and it's definitely not a fuel pump. So it's just two 12 millimeter bolts here and here to 14 foot pounds. There we go. Real quick on this, this hose here, there's a Carter pin that drop it. sits in here. And you can just pull it basically straight out and then this lets, lets loose. Allows you to take that off, that hose. Another one's just a constant tension clamp. toes we're going to take off. I'm gonna cut it, just uh, do that. But it's being a plastic part, don't wanna break it. broken off might look at replacing that part I'm go ahead and take this thing off and uh, order a new one Oh, these are on there good.
I'm going to cut and yank this thing off. All right, we're going to keep putting on hoses here. one right here orient it correctly take the old clamp off of it get it on our new one and that'll and hop up in here Next, we'll work on taking this bottom hose clamp off. I can slide it out a little better. So I can work on it. Cool. These things are just on here good. Cut it like I did the other one, other side. Go from there. In the essence of time.
Yeah, that's on there. We'll do the next one. Just realize there's this little heater hose here that this will not go any further down than that. I feel like it was on there good. It was just fine. Pretty good right there. Okay, we're gonna slip on this small radiator or heater hose. went ahead and ordered one of these actuators off of Amazon for like $20 next day because the Toyota one is $160. So. I can replace this thing super easy. So, not really concerned if it breaks in a year or two years or 10 years. If it continues to happen, then yeah. Go back with the Toyota brand, but I think they're all plastic and cheap filling. These new hoses slide on so much easier than the old ones. So much easier. I'm gonna take this off. Connect it up later. All right, I'm gonna put on another new hose I bought. This one comes out to the bottom of the throttle body. That off. Slide it on like so. Turn it that way. have to adjust it later. I don't know the angle it's going to come in at. Yeah, right here. 
motor bypass hose. I'm gonna replace this heater valve. I chipped this side of it right here. I got this one from Rock Auto. It's a Four Seasons brand. The one I got from Amazon, the, the screws didn't line up. So we're gonna take these two bottom screws off and put this bracket on. Okay, the Rock Auto Four Seasons one, the screws lined up perfectly. So we're gonna install it with a 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, I've got it in place. like that I'm gonna put these heater hoses on pretty self-explanatory all right here's a picture of it installed I used the HPS hose clamp over here because the original one seemed too complicated and didn't want to mess with it the leaks I'll put this guy back on or this guy on um, so yeah use a constant tension clamp on this side clip this on and then there's a little this unclips here but I latched it back in right here and it feels pretty smooth worked the heater knob inside and it felt good all right we're gonna slide over to the passenger side real quick put the water outlet I think it is outlet on you got the gasket You've got the raised side of it. We're gonna put that up against the engine block, like so. Two 12 millimeter bolts. Get that upside down there. Thermostat, or the temperature sensor needs to go on the top. All right, and we're gonna torque those down to 15 foot-pounds.